questioning like why are why are we here like what are we doing here and like i can't make a difference and i who am i to have gifts and i remember jesus appeared and he stood face to face and he took my hand put it on his heart and put his hand on my heart so we were kind of like this presence of his energy the frequency the light of his energy i was just like whoa look into my eyes he's like what is within you meaning like your heart is also within me everything that is within me is also within you as it is within everybody hey everyone this is Jeanette Byro and you are watching or listening to your superior self Jeanette thank you for taking the time again round 2 uh, I'm really excited about this conversation. Last time we talked a lot about your NDE and uh, how you, being a medium, uh, experienced the other side and came back. And uh, then I found out you were a channel too. So I was like, I got to have you back to kind of channel some messages, especially rolling into 2024. Uh, the way that we have so far, it's been 17 days and I feel like we've experienced a lot in the last 17 days. So thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you this. It was like, so it was like after you have a, an amazing conversation with someone and you realize you left out a whole lot on like on the table, I kind of slapped myself in the face. I was like, uh, I want to know how she experiences reality. So I'm going to, I'm going to kick this bad boy off right now. I want to know how do you experience reality? Mm, I was having a conversation about that just last night, actually. So that's interesting. You bring it up. Um, reality for me, I have had to come to terms with my reality is very different than anybody else's. And I don't mean that in a superior way. It's just different. And the reason why I say that is because for a long time, I tried to kind of mute my gifts or mute my awareness, like tone it down and only use it at certain times or only feel things at certain times. And if I was out in public or say at an event or something and spirit slipped in, I almost kind of was like, no, 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 in a negative. And, you know, also just being really cautious of what I said and who I said it to. And, and I find over the last couple of years, I've really embraced the idea of letting go of normal and embracing my normal, which is different. And I, I say that it's different because at any given time, I have spirit talking to me. My guides are very, very chatty with me. There are times where I consciously choose to increase my frequency so that I can hear, see, and feel more. And then there's times where I lower it. But when I'm watching TV at nighttime, say, even as a family or watching a family movie, it is so common. It's actually more uncommon if I don't see any activity from spirit, but I will see either different spirits, often different orbs, sizes, colors come in through my vision, through the living room. And I'll just in my mind be like, Hey, how you doing? How are you? Nice to see you. Like, that's very normal for me. It's also normal for me to pick up a uh, energy behind somebody. If I'm talking to them, I don't let it distract me anymore. I just kind of, while I'm having the conversation, I say, hi, it's normal for me to have different body sensations come over me out of nowhere. Like, say suddenly the feeling of a heart attack. And when I say I get the feeling of it, I get the conscious awareness of it without the pain point, right? Mm. And I can, in that moment, determine who is this in relation to? Is it something I need to do about it? All of that, like, so that's my normal. And then my normal of, hey, where do we wanna go for dinner tonight? Or do you wanna go to a movie? My normal response is not just, do I wanna do this? I'm tuning into my body. I'm tuning into my energy. I'm tuning into the energy of whatever the planets are. Like, do I feel this is a conducive energy or not? And so instead of fighting those things before and trying to stay in the box of normal, I just embrace all of that. I embrace when I feel a massive world anxiety coming on and I'm like, something big is about to go down and I've learned to embrace it without the fear. And then oftentimes I'll wake up in the morning and there has been an earthquake somewhere or something. So it's a heightened state, I'll say that, but I've really learned to honor myself in it 
And I'm really lucky that I have beautifully supportive people around me now that if, you know, say again, we're going to go to a movie. And if I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm suddenly getting a hard no, we cannot go there tonight. Those around me will listen, which is really nice, right? I'm not looked at kind of crazy. So a little bit of my reality. Well, hitting on fear, right? There has been a lot. I don't know if you want to call it like spiritual disassociation or not, but people will often say that's not my reality, right? Like I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear about COVID. I don't want to hear about the wars that are going on because I don't want to create that reality. That's not my reality. Uh, however, um, it doesn't matter how high uh, that you're vibrating or how high your frequency is. It seems like there is a lot of randomness and chaos in this universe. So what's your perspective on that, right? Like no matter how high you are vibrating or how high your frequency is, bad things still do happen. How do you teach people how to pursue um, their journey like through that and navigate those waters? That's a great question. Uh, one thing I think at the very like baseline is we need to remember that we came to earth to experience polarity. If we didn't want polarity, we would be still in a higher realm somewhere. So our souls decided to come down to earth to have an experience, especially at this time, to experience a whole plethora of emotions, impacts, growth, traumas, triggers, also goodness, right? All of it. And so I think it's really important that we never ignore the humanness of who and where we are. But I think it's also important that we embrace the spirit self or the energetic self of who and where we are also. So I often say to people like, be aware of what's happening in the world. I don't think we want to be ignorant, but also choose what you're focusing your time on. Are you in a position where you can make a difference in something, right? Is the war happening in your community or are you connected to something that can make a difference? If so, then you lend your hand, your expertise where you can. If you can't directly make an effect in that, you can still be aware of what's happening, but you can choose to hold your frequency high or your your heart space open or your compassion high. You can be bright and cheerful to help keep that collective frequency higher to try and help give energetics to those that are in those really tough situations. So I think it's really about what we're choosing to focus our time on rather than being ignorant and blocking something out, right? Or being so high up that like, you know, we we lose track with our feet on the ground on earth because we need to also very much be human. Mm, I love that. Do you ever experience glitches in the simulation or the, uh, in the game, video game of life? Yes, a lot, a lot. And I have noticed so many more glitches, especially through the fall time. The fall was very, very glitchy, fall 2023 super glitchy uh, conversations that I didn't have. Suddenly the other person's following up on that conversation. I'm like, Ooh, I wasn't there for that one. Um, Really? Yeah. Something as simple, like here's a very, very vivid, simple uh, one was a friend of mine was like, Hey, can I come drop off the kayak? I'm like, what kayak? She's like, you know, my kayak, you said you would store it. I'm like, what? Okay. Like, sure. Yeah. We'll store it outside. Um, and I'm like, is it the orange one? Cause she had a blow up kayak. She's like, no, the yellow one. I had no idea. She had a yellow hard shell kayak. Like, no, I do not have the recollection of that phone call or conversation, but she did. And the reason why that one stood out was because there was so many other glitches at that time. One of them is a tree on my drive to the grocery store, which I do a couple times a week. Uh, one day there was a completely different tree there and I'm not talking about a little one. It's an established tree that the day before was not there. And so it was different in my reality. And, uh, same thing goes for, um, gosh, like even just different knowings. I've had times where this has happened several times where there are certain people in my reach and my family that I already had the experience that they passed away. And sometimes it had already been for a couple of years in my knowledge. And then one time my mom mentioned somebody and I was like, no, they passed away. And she's like, no, I'm like, yeah, they passed away like a couple of years ago. And she's like, no, they're still alive. And that's happened uh, at least three times with different people. 
the Mandela effect, right? 100% the Mandela effect. Wow. Yeah. I've never experienced that. I have experienced my wife telling me something that I don't remember her saying, <laughs> which I just thought it was like, you know, you never listen to me, right? Like you're, there's a lot of conversations or a lot of uh, topics or, or, you know, we got to be somewhere and I don't remember us having that conversation. And then, mm -hmm. you know, obviously I just thought it was me being a, a dumb husband, but um, that's fascinating that like you've had that experience of like conversations that never happened, trees that, that were, uh, weren't there before now there, mm -hmm. um, people that have uh, like the Manila effect. I think I just, yeah. how do, how do so many people like have a difference in story? Like, that's just so fascinating to me. Like the Bernstein yeah. bears. I don't know if you yeah. know that thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like I remember growing up and the Bernstein bears would spell a totally different way than it is today. And it's like, yeah. that's so freaky to me. Yeah. Um, that just, that, I don't know. What do you think that is though? Like the, like that's I, oh gosh i mean like one of those things is parallel timelines if you will or like okay i'm trying to think of how far back i can go to explain this so my spirit guides always explain it this way when we come down into a lifetime it's like a piece of our whole soul so if our whole soul is like a pie right our higher self is a pie and a slice of that pie comes down into this incarnation and has a life experience. And then when we cross and pass over, it connects back into that pie. And that's why when I talk to spirits who passed over, they are like all knowing, right? They're, they're just all knowing and they reconnect into all the lifetimes they've had and all of that. That's a very linear description of how it happens. If we take that a step further, what really happens is that piece of pie that comes down actually fragments into many different experiences on either this planet or another planet at the same time so you can connect in with parallel versions of self that have split off from that high piece itself in this incarnation sometimes some are a little bit farther ahead in the future some are a little bit farther behind but they're all happening at the same time if we try to compare it to linear time as we have it now mm -hmm. so like different versions of Trey in different timelines? Yes. And then at the same time, it also taps into conscious choice and how at any given moment you're creating your trajectory based on your blueprint. So you can alter it at any time as well. <laughs> yeah, you can like, yeah, you're the blueprint yeah. alterer. Yeah. So you can like jump a timeline too, uh, which is why you can get a, a glitch. So you can either merge with a parallel version of you, you can have like a parallel version walk in where two of your timelines merge together and you, you kind of gain more resources when that happens. But when that happens too, though, you, you like, you merge into the two and there can be those glitch points as well. Walk in, you said walk in. So I've had a couple of guests say that they, they are a walk in. Do you mm -hmm. know what they are? Yes. Um, I've had a couple experiences with walk-ins. There are many different ways that a soul can walk in. And so first and foremost, a soul cannot just take over somebody. There has to be an agreement. So I don't want anyone listening thinking that this is like a possession situation. Um, the value of an incarnation, the value of a human adult body is huge. And so for some souls, they will make an agreement with the natal soul, the one that's being born, that's going to grow from the child into the adult. They'll make an agreement that the natal soul will come in for a certain amount of time, and then it will leave and another soul will walk into that adult conscious body and take over their life path. And usually it changes it uh, significantly. So that's when you have a walk-in situation agreed upon before you came in with a separate soul but you can also have uh you could call it a walk-in or you could call it a merge where another aspect of yourself merges in with you in this lifetime and i know of somebody who had that exact experience where they were really struggling in this lifetime and i remember in a reading i described it to her that she had another self like version of self walk in when she was crossing the road at a certain time and everything changed for her and her depression eased and she was able to finally move forward because this other soul version of her merged in with her and amplified her capacity.
Hmm. Right. So, I mean, that's kind of a rabbit hole, uh, you know, mind bender, but, but yeah, it's, it's possible. Well, like, so when you're bringing in different aspects of your soul, right. As your journey changes, as your path changes, like as you're trying to recreate your life, maybe by desire or, um, a pull, I feel like my life is unfolding a certain way and this is my life plan. However, I feel like as we grow, as we evolve, that plan changes. And now it's kind of like you, some people have like, there. some people are just not going to want to be the average Joe. Like some people are going to want to go outside of, of that average and, and be maybe an outlier or someone who wants to pursue a bigger path as you're going and re um, I guess um, rerouting your objective. Are you, are you pulling in different aspects of your soul to accomplish that goal, to, to fulfill that, that destiny, that journey? Uh, I think sometimes yes. And I think sometimes you're actually just doing it in a singular timeline. Hmm. But I do know that the more authentic you are with self within each parallel timeline, and again, you can only control the one that you're conscious of, Right. But the more authentic you are or more aligned you are with your soul's desire, like blueprint, right? Like when you're following your your compass, the more your parallel lives start to link together. And so your width of experience gets wider and it becomes a more singular experience versus divided. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah. Well, I guess an easier question is how do you change your blueprint without having to die and do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, basically look for the repeated patterns in your lifetime because your repeated patterns are where you have soul lessons, where your soul is desiring to learn a lesson. And when you can complete that pattern fully is when you can either kind of remove that fuse that is that lesson or move on from it. Hmm. Yeah. So give us like an example of a pattern, right? As someone may be re-experiencing re maybe 10 years, every 20 years, uh, but they're just blind to it. Yeah. So maybe somebody has um, an issue with finances and they continually lose money and they lose it and they lose it and like poor investments, poor investments. And they're like, why is this always a thing? Why am I always having issues with money? Well, there's a soul lesson they're desiring to learn about perhaps attachment, right? An attachment to a material thing. And so when they go deeper and deeper into why they have that attachment or what is rooted in that attachment, eventually they're going to get to the bottom. And when you get to the bottom of it is when it kind of just goes like, and then that issue that isn't an issue anymore. Hmm. Right? And I'm, I'm generalizing it because it depends on what it is, but yeah. that's, that's kind of the general sense of it is like finding the root of it. And then you can kind of pull the root out. Yeah, Sure. How many guides do you have with you right now? Ah, uh, I have my council, um, which there are seven of them. Um, I had another guide with me about a couple hours ago. That was a new one as well, uh, that I can kind of feel on the periphery, but, um, yeah, I definitely have my seven with me. Seven. Do you ever see them in your physical reality? Cause I remember in your story, you, you did have like a physical, like uh experience with a guide right uh mm -hmm. i think one that was dressed up in like army fatigues yeah you still yeah. have like you know interactions in this physical reality yeah i do sometimes it's not as common because it takes them so much energy to densify in this reality like to be honest if anybody has ever seen a ghost like legitimately seen a ghost where they saw you know a floating head or a floating torso it's actually so impressive because the amount of energy that that spirit had to exert to show themselves manifested in our reality is huge. So instead of running and screaming, we actually have to be like, way to go. Like, mm. good job, right? Round which is why applause. also, yeah, which is why they tend to have like a, um, like a sometimes a scary, but like startled face is almost like they're pushing so hard to push this energy and it just, it gives a burst, right? So anyways, um, I say that because the amount of energy for them to, fully manifest or I will say partially man manifest because they're kind of see-through when they do uh, is a lot and it's so much easier for them to just speak to me in my mind or show me their imagery in my mind or be an orb until I tune in however uh, I do have a couple that will show themselves every once in a while and I call it 4D physical 
because they come all the way down to fourth dimension. So a lot of people may not see that, but it is physical to me, but I know that they're in fourth dimension physical. So has anybody from your family ever seen them? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. I don't think anyone's ever. No. I'm just pondering if my daughter's ever, she's never seen anyone. She's heard, she's heard them before, but she hasn't seen them. Does she have gifts too? She does. Yeah. But they're still, they're still growing for her. She's just, I'm, I want her just to be a kid Good. until they really show themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, she's got a great teacher, right? Well, I mean, I would like to say so. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, I, you know, it's so important that we let kids be kids. And when questions come up, we dive into it and we explore it and we talk about it. But um, she's asked me a bunch of times, like, mom, when am I going to do what you do? And I'm like, you know, all in due time, you'll know when it's time. You'll be asking those questions. And I mean, even the questions she asks already, though, are pretty profound, but we mm. keep it pretty simple. Do you ever have like moments where you can see what's coming? Like, I guess the future or... Um... I don't know, like some mediums that I have spoken to can like, that's all they do. I mean, yeah, they can have conversations with the seas past loved ones, but their forte is essentially the future and predictions. Like, do you have mm -hmm. that trait? I have had that, um, predictions. Like I usually give probabilities is how my guides give it to me because a prediction is a snapshot of the highest probability at that given time. And because free will choice can always potentially derail something for good, or maybe not for good. We can't ever say hundred percent for sure. So somebody could say, you know, in six months, this is going to happen. And it does happen because the highest probability is that it will. And then it in fact did. Right. So like the snapshot that the guides are giving based on what they're seeing predicts this outcome. Uh, but it's always a probability. So I always say that to people in a reading, if they're wanting to know like what's happening with my career, what's happening with my job. And if I tune in and I'm like, you know, there's something coming in the span of three months time. But again, that is a snapshot at this given time. More often than not, it is accurate. But that's something we really need to consider when it comes to predictions is that probability piece. Because sometimes we lock ourselves into something being for sure because it was predicted. And then it actually can alter our path to it. And then we veer off. Hmm. Because yeah. we don't want it, like we see it and we get, maybe we get angry at it or something like that. And just, we decide not to do something because now we think it's going to happen. Maybe. Yeah. But that can be like both good and bad. So like, say there's something good that's coming, say, you know, you're going to end up in Costa Rica in three months, right? Say that's what it is. And you're like, okay, perfect. But then you don't take the small opportunities that you would have had you not known that along the way that actually get you there. Oh, wow. Right. So we can derail it. So that's why, like, I mean, and I have gone down some deep journeys with predictions of all kinds of things where I've really learned we have to always take it with a grain of salt. Even if it, it feels so finite, it is giving us the probability because I have seen, you know, even some people when, um, like, our power of choice can go even to, in some cases, when people are passing, I've seen people where they are literally coding on the table and they ask for an extension of time and they get it. Hmm. And so in that moment, highest probability is they're not coming back. They're 99% gone, but their ability to choose still, even in those fi fi final moments, gives them another three days, 30 days, three months right? It, it's so ever changing based on free will. Yeah. So. Well, it's interesting. You say that the choice to stay here, because it seems like all the near death experiences like yourself, like there's a hesitant hesitancy to come back here, right? Like to, um, I know you did, you did obviously come back. Right. Um, but some people, when they talk about their near death, the near death experience, they don't want to come back. Yeah. So, uh, I guess my question is what, what is said up there or wherever we go on the other side that makes people come back, I guess. Right. Like if it's so great yeah. over there, like a lot of people read near death experiences and they're like, I don't want, I'm quit. I'm done. Like I just, 
I'm done. Like, I want to yeah. go over there, right? Mm -hmm. Why do they keep coming back? So that's interesting. And it's funny, I was pondering this too. Just the other night I was driving and it popped into my head. And I've had a lot of people say, what's different about my story is that I wanted to come back and there aren't as many who wanted to come back. Most want to stay like you're talking about. And I know from other stories I've heard from people is, you know, they either weren't allowed to stay. It wasn't their time to go yet. So they kind of had to come back. Um, others were shown what their life would be like if they didn't come back and those around them. And so they come back for that. I know for me, though, I knew I wasn't done. And when the the biggest thing for me too, because I was given that opportunity. They're like, do you want to stay or do you want to go? So I wasn't told like, you can't stay, you have to go back. But I remember talking to my higher self and seeing my higher self's absolute love and adoration for the human incarnation and how worthwhile it is and how much can be done. I was like, oh gosh, I don't want to give up on that yet. There's still more to do, even though it is so peaceful and serene and beautiful there. And so I mean, in like the last four years with what the world has gone through, I have pondered many times, like, why, like, obviously I'm here because I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to do my thing. I've got my kids. I've got my family. That matters to me. So that aside, there's still times where I'm like, man, this earth is so polarized and it's so heavy sometimes. And these wars are heartbreaking and that like, there's so many heartbreaking things to see on this planet. It's harsh. And every time I think of that, I'm like, I had an opportunity to stay over there. And then right away, it always flashes to seeing my higher self value human life. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Like, I wouldn't want to give up on this journey yet because I've come so far and there's so much more I can learn, so much more I can do, help, grow and all of that. And so all to say, there's huge value in the human experience. And souls really, really appreciate that, like spirit guides, all of that. So they never want to take a human out before they've amassed everything they can from this incarnation. Have you, do you have a memory of like a non-human experience? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what was the difference, right? Uh, depending on where it is. So um, this is funny because this could be a rabbit hole too, but. Years and years ago, I remember doing a meditation and I remembered a lifetime where I was a tree, like a big cedar tree. I spent 300 years as a cedar tree wow. and it was, that's a was, long time. <laughs> yeah. But it was different because the experience of time as a tree is completely different. And I know for some people listening to this, it's like, what? I get it. Been there, but it's different. So each incarnation, depending on where you are, has its value and purpose for whatever it is. And that tree incarnation was after I'd had a very wild human incarnation where I had a lot of capacity, a lot of energy could move through me, a lot of uh, power, if you will, like connection to elements and all of that kind of stuff. And coming in as the tree was very recalibrating to my soul energy on this planet. Right. So there's value in every kind of incarnation we have. Same with ones that are off planet somewhere else. Sometimes we'll come into an off planet incarnation where it's much more high vibe, higher consciousness, less strife. So we can learn and grow in that energy. And then oftentimes bring that knowledge frequentially back into a human experience to either help humanity grow or help our own soul journey. So when you were that tree, were you like out in the wild somewhere? Like how 300 yeah. years and then what happened? Like, did the tree die? Like, did it get chopped down? Like, how did you <laughs> Interesting that? enough, it was uh, like a walk-in situation. Mm. So then I exchanged soul energies with somebody else. And I and here's another piece, which is interesting, is when I was that tree, I had a very masculine energy. Really? Like I would have been like um, a male tree, for lack of a better word. It was very like grandfather-like energy. Wow. Yeah. That's so fascinating. Could you communicate with other trees? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Trees absolutely communicate together um, energetically through sound, through frequencies that move through their roots and the mycelium in the forest. Like they are so interconnected and they are such storehouses of information. It's amazing. There's some neat books out there too now of people that are tapping into that knowledge 
of what the forests really are. I think one of them is like the mother tree, I think it's called, but there's, yeah, there's our What's forests so are. Because yeah. going back to the simulation uh, theory, or this is a virtual reality, right? Like I'm the player wearing the headset in the simulation game. I don't know if I'm just, it's just a single player game where I'm just having this experience in this reality, or is it a, a multiplayer like chat room where everyone's kind of jumping into the system and playing their own role. But like, where does like consciousness fall in with the elements? You know, like uh, we talked about Panchamama last time. Like, does the earth have its own consciousness in the simulation? Does the ocean have its own consciousness? Is the air, does, does the, the clouds, I mean, all of that. Yeah, it does. It does. So earth definitely has a consciousness. Um, interesting information about that connecting to walk-ins too, is the very first earth frequency was very masculine in nature when the earth was still very like uh, molten, if you will. The feminine energy that has, you know, taken over many, many, many years ago. I don't know the exact number, but like thousands, millions years ago uh, is very feminine in nature. And just like humans have soul experiences through being a human, um, souls can have experiences through being a planet. And there is a connection between planetary systems and galaxies, just like there are connections between, you know, the different cells and neurons in our bodies. Mm. Like when they say as above, so below, you know, when you look inside a single cell, so let's just take a single skin cell or muscle cell, and you have the nucleus and you have mitochondria and you have cytoplasm and you have all the different things. And the nucleus, the DNA within the nucleus looks to that cytoplasm to take information for how it's going to replicate. That's its little world, but that's everything to it. But it is a tiny piece of just the human, right? And one human is a tiny piece of all the humans on earth. And so earth to us is a big piece, but earth is a tiny piece within the galactic network. So sure. everything is connected on every level. Do you have a, a memory of being a planet? No, I don't have a memory of being a planet. I don't. No. Um, but coming back to the elements, like you were asking, uh, the elements do also have consciousness. And I remember when I first connected into the water element, I was blown away uh, wow. with its ability to communicate and i mean it doesn't mean like in the movie moana the water comes up and starts talking it's not like that right but there's consciousness in all things and so when you have indigenous cultures talking about the consciousness in a rock and the consciousness in a tree and the raccoon and um it's it's accurate in terms of my reality anyway uh water has the ability to communicate energy and we're starting to be able to even prove that now scientifically if you look at Masaru, Dr. Masaru Emoto's work, Messages mm -hmm. in Water, he would freeze water with words that represented a frequency and it would change the way in which the water would freeze, right? If he wrote a word on a post-it that said, I love you, the water would freeze in a beautiful symmetrical crystal. If he wrote, I hate you on the water, it wouldn't freeze properly. It would be really like disjointed. So that's very basic level of how water can connect in a level of consciousness, but I've had my own experiences with water where it can communicate like an energy and I have merged with water. I have, um, I mean, one time, if anyone, anyone that knows me, I do not like cold. I am, as we sit here, I am bundled up. I've got a massive sweater. I've got a huge blanket on. I don't like cold. And um, one time this water near Whistler called me into a lake and it was probably mid fall, which is not swimming weather because most lakes where I live in the summer are too cold, but the water beckoned me in and I went in and I swam to the middle of the lake. And then I just floated on my back and I wasn't cold anymore. And I merged. I had this absolute amazing experience with water where I became the same frequency as the water. We were mm -hmm. one in the same. And it was this beautiful communication about how frequencies work and this connection with water and the elements and how all elements have a capacity to merge with us, teach us things. Um, which is why when people say like, you know, connect to the earth, 
it's more than just connecting to Mother Gaia, but it's connecting to the elemental nature of that as well. So again, <clears throat> that's another crazy tangent. <laughs> I love tangents. That's what I do. Yeah. Um, I just think it's so fascinating um, because like they have sensory deprivation tanks, right? Yeah. And you can go into, into these places that uh, will really focus on health and uh, reconnecting. And you can get in, into these tanks and you can have experiences like that where you just kind of fill the void and connect with something higher. I know um, I connect with Mother Ocean quite a bit in the summertime. Not now. I'm not a big mm -hmm. cold plunger. I don't like the cold like you, but you're, yeah. you know, you're very, you're, you're higher north than I am. And I don't, yes. I don't know how you do it. Like, it's just, it's like 20 degrees here. And I'm just like, ah, oh, man, it's too cold. But I love connecting with Mother mother ocean it's just something about it you step in it and you can just feel her presence like the, mm -hmm. the power the power mm -hmm. the energy behind it right the waves crashing in and there's a calmness to it like uh, you know it may be rough at the surface but deep down in the depths it's very calm and it feels mm -hmm. like there's a, a wisdom there that uh, is just waiting for us to tap into and maybe maybe atlantis is down there i don't know but uh yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts all that because like I just feel like uh, I'm asking you all these crazy questions, uh, but okay. Atlantis. So I, I've talked, I've talked to a couple of people that really believe this is a virtual reality and that there, there are different dimensions, right? Like, so the aliens, they don't think that aliens are uh, extraterrestrial. They think that it's, in, they are interdimensional. So people were kind of like, to your point of like, seeing or crossing timelines um same kind of thing where they're experiencing a different dimension and now they're in someone else's world and then they're back into this reality um this these people some of these people believe that atlantis didn't happen here in this timeline on this earth that it's actually a memory of a different time frame or a different reality bite or however you want to word that like a different reality game virtual reality game what are your thoughts? Do you think that Atlantis mm. was actually here in this timeline? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, personally, I do. Yeah, I do. Atlantis and Lemuria. Um, I think we are deeply connected to those different times in history. And the Earth has just been changing and morphing, which, you know, hides a lot of what used to be. Because I do believe that we've had many different incarnations as humans. And some people say we're on our fifth. Some people say we're on our sixth uh, attempt at humanity awakening before it gets all wiped out by a massive wave or an asteroid or something. And so I do believe in these connections to Atlantis and Lemuria and those ancient civilizations. I do. I feel this like frequency within it. And what's interesting too is like those have been connection points for us with origins of humanity but it even goes way farther back than that right like our known or even our our proposed history like it even goes farther back than that so we're really only dabbling in a tiny little pool here of what we think it all is does that make sense where i'm yeah. explaining it yeah it just it's so and it just makes me so curious because it's like if they were so advanced, like where are they? It's like the Mayans, right? Like they they're not here anymore, like completely gone. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how did they what did they have a war that was so destructive that just annihilated everyone? And we we're, we're the only things that that survived that, or you know what I mean? Like, are mm -hmm. we did we actually did the human race actually evolve um biologically here, or would we like like I don't know, put together somewhere else and sent here, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know? That's yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I have some really fun ET guides and they've talked a lot about the human origins and stuff like that and how it's not just what Darwin says. There is a certain amount of evolution, but that whole uh, missing link that they always talk about, like how did humans really evolve and make this big leap from this to this? Um, there was a lot of ET connection into that, into the manipulation if you want to call it that of the genetic sequencing of humans or which created humans from homo erectus they say um there's there's definitely that connection in there 
Um, and I think more and more people are starting to either open up to that, talk about it, channel stuff about that so that we're getting more and more into our human origins, which actually is something that my guides mentioned in December we would be seeing in 2024. Uh, more. Well, let's go ahead and jump into that, right? They did it. I think yeah. the channeling for that. They did. They brought through a bunch of things coming through in 2024. There was actually one of them, though, who isn't always a regular guide of mine. He comes around a fair amount of time, but it was a neat download. So I'd love to share it with you and your sure, listeners absolutely. if you're open to it. Yeah. So this came from Sanat Kumara. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Sanat Kumara is an ascended master. And what that means is he has finished um, ascending through earth lives to become a master of them therefore not needing to come back, but taking on the role of re regent of earth, meaning kind of overseeing humanity. And when I saw him come forward, um, I was working on this presentation at the time about what was to come or what spirit sees in 2024. And I saw him come into my vision and the way I see him, and again, people can see him differently, but he started walking down this spiral staircase, almost with the air and presence of Dr. Strange. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Yeah. I love Dr. That movie. Change. Yeah, it's a great movie, right? Um, kind of looked like that, like that similar sort of cape, not the red, but similar. Anyways, this is what he had to share, and I thought it was really neat. So he said, I've watched humanity grow, evolve, fall, rise, triumph, rebirth, and more over eons. Incarnating in human form is not taken lightly by the incarnating soul, as well as the supporting souls, such as spirit guides and spirit teachers. We hold a high level of respect for the amount of change that the planet has undergone most recently. Humanity has had to run deeply confronting obstacles over the last four years, and it has not been limited to this past four years, but this stretch of ascension has been relentless with what it has asked of each and every one of you. It was an experiment of growth potential, and we're so pleased to see the growth that has taken place and that it has reached several beautiful frequential milestones. Even more so, the anchoring of the new thought, thoughts and frequencies that have occurred has resulted in, um, sorry, even more so, the anchoring of the new thoughts and frequency that has occurred as a result of this growth is strong and secure in its form. Jeanette has mentioned many times the concept of the zip tie. And so that basically, like, you know, you put a zip tie together and you can't reverse it, right? Every time it clicks forward one, it can't go backwards. That's what he's referencing. And he says, we agree that in this new timeline, we will not be going backwards. Many of you have created solid anchor points that is creating pathways and light for the arrival of many more. The highest probability of this timeline suggests that it will not slip away. From now until 2030, much of the focus will be on implementing pathways of change, paths that are created for others to follow suit. This is not an easy task, but with the amount of structures and sim systems that have crumbled, there is now room for these new paths to be carved. Some of those are being carved at present. Those of you in the new frequency all now carry a frequency of consciousness that allows you to connect into bigger picture thinking. One that is not based on greed and pride, but rather one based on collective growth and compassion. There has been a significant rise in the reconnection between humans and their perceived value of the land that is Mother Earth. For humans to have a collective frequency of greater care for the planet means they have it within them to have greater care for their collective species as well. This change has created a will within to push for stronger resonance and truths in many facets of Earth life. As a result, it is also creating a stronger divide between old world frequency and new world frequency. Your role is to hold steady to what you know to be true within your known frequency of alignment. This frequency is important for all paths, but most specifically to help shift the energy of war on your planet. The energy of deep conflict will continue to pull others back into fear as the very threat of their lives is unavoidable. Many cannot feign ignorance when, we are erupt when wars are erupting all over the planet. We see that war will still be holding a presence until those in positions of power can step in from that higher perspective. However, what you are all doing now is creating the framework for that to happen. We are pleased to say that there are those rising to positions of power over the next decade 
that hold the higher frequency and they are beginning to carve the path in that way too. Please feel our gratitude and encouragement for you on your journey. Well, that might be the most positive 2024 prediction I've ever heard so far. Well, <laughs> that Yeah, that was his like, that was his uh, information. And then came like the prediction pieces or the probabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, um, he said something about true to your known frequency, say true to your known frequency. Yeah. What does that mean? Does that mean like, is that kind of the same thing where you know your truth? Like, you know your own truth and to stick with that because there was going to be a lot of deception, a lot of fear, a yeah. lot of like misinformation coming and to stay like sturdy in your own, like, I guess, resonance. I mean, if something re like the way that I interpret that is I have my, my, I have a consciousness level. I have a frequency. I have a, I don't want to call it a belief system, but I have like a knowing, an inner knowing, a guidance. And, um, you know, I'm not delusional to, to think that there's nothing outside of me that isn't, isn't, um, that couldn't influence that, but to stand firm in this knowing that, um, my truth is my truth. And so when I hear a lot of, uh, information being spread over mass media or social media or whatever, right? Like to really stand tall into my own knowing mm -hmm. and to really be in my own, my own power yeah, and to live my life that way. Right. That's what Absolutely. that means to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Use your discernment. What aligns for you? Because what aligns for you may not for another, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. Well, that's the thing. Everyone's searching for that truth. I mean, I was doing that. Like I, I, I'm still kind of doing that where I'm looking for truth, right? But I'm the more that I'm searching, the more that I'm finding that there's a lot of truths and everyone has their own truth. And mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. It's just their truth. Absolutely. And at some point that will change. It will, it will evolve. But it's kind of like, you know, you just, you see things and hear things that you're just kind of like, what? Like, what? is that even like, I've heard, like this place is a soul trap, right? Like for, you know, reincarnation is a soul trap. I've heard, you know, the whole reptilian thing, like, like what? Like all of that, right? But I feel like that is true for some people. Like that could be their own reality that they're creating, right? Mm -hmm. And I just don't resonate with that. So going back, I'm going to trust my own frequency and my own resonance and be like, all right, that could be someone's reality, but it's not my reality. Again, but I'm not going back to, I, I'm taking, you know, I know that there's chaos and I know that there's randomness in this universe that it could be possibly true or whatever. I don't know. But for me, I'm going to stand in my own power, right? Like I know I'm a sentient being and like, I'm going to stand in that. So whatever comes at me, I'm going to stand in my power and embrace it and trust it and just kind of keep pursuing my path. If any of that makes sense. 100% makes sense. And that I, I agree. It is about what resonates for you and why are you here? What are you doing here for you? What is your soul path? Find that, feel it. You don't have to understand it, uh, but feel it and follow it, right? And then, and then you're you're doing what you're meant to be doing. So, yeah, two things can be true, even if they're opposing, based on people's perspectives. So, yeah, I love what you said. It goes back to the law of polarity, right? Like, there's there's an extreme side of it, and there's a, another extreme side of it. But like, you know, it's. It's like, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily good or bad. It's just like an, an experience. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, we could possibly be destroyed by reptiles uh, that have like a, this different consciousness and different frequency and army or whatever. But it's like, uh, I just, I guess I'll stand in the light. I don't know. There's, you know, again, there's a light in the darkness, right? Like there's yeah. just, it's just perception. It's someone where they're at in their path. And it's like, to me, it's, but I get caught up in that game too. I'm like, I'm, I'm for the light. I'm for the goodness. But then it's like, there's an aspect of myself that I'm denying, you know, mm -hmm. like there is a part of me, there's a shadow part of me that I'm denying and that I'm saying is wrong mm -hmm. when, how can I do that? Right? Like, how can I say that this part of me that, that I, yes, it doesn't make me feel comfortable like that, that, that there's a part of me that would do bad things, 
but it's there. Like I can't overlook it. I'm just not, you know, maybe I'm not even conscious of that. What if it's in the unconscious, but like, kind of like, I guess just realizing that it's all aspects of myself. Right. Yeah. And not like pushing it away because like the more that you push that part of you away, like Freud's point of the id, right. The more that you like push it and, and try to, um, push it deep down, it's just going to, it's going to pop up in other areas of your life as anxiety or stress or, or depression or anything like that. And you're, you're not going to know what it is. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautifully <laughs> said. I don't know if, if it's the T or just that part about standing in your frequency, because it's that resonated with me a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I just feel like we're going to be, we're going to be going into times of uncertainty and I feel like the more that we prepare ourselves for that, like just mm -hmm. to the awareness around that. Um, Wait, yeah. And you know, that's what like the last four years have been. So I'm sure I mentioned it last time we chatted, but uh, 2022 now to 2024 was all about like a hundred years worth of growth and an ascension in the span of four years, right? Condensed. So that's why we saw so much stuff that asked us to question so many things within us and outside of us, Right. And it was to radically shake up everybody to be like, what do you really think? Who are you? Not how do you fit in here or there? Just who are you? And once you know that, stand in your power. And the fact that so many people have done that, have started to look into those things and stand in their power is what makes this year now of 2024 so different. It doesn't mean we are in this absolute like utopia like energy now, but we are in a very different energy of personal power of exactly what you're talking about, which makes the experience different. Because now if you experience something that's really challenging, well, you know yourself so much better. So what maybe would have triggered you into a real darkness because you'd been avoiding it before. Now that you've, you know, become friends with that darker side of you, you're like, hey, we're kind of tipping in there. What do we need to do? Okay. We healed that, that, and that's triggering that a little bit. Let's work on that. All right, let's get back out and keep going. It's a different experience. So there's a lot more soul wisdom that people have now that is going to make the experiences different. Hmm. Yeah. What about predictions, right? Those are always fun. Yeah, predictions. I mean, well, so... One of them was kind of what we just talked about, which was a big reduction in collective generational trauma because of what everybody has done in the last four years, that it's actually clearing the way for more souls to come in without karmas. So a lot more children being born are going to be born in without as much soul karma to do, meaning they come in with so much more space to grow and evolve. So that's really cool. Um, another one they talked about was continued uh, medical advancements in sound and light therapy. So they were talking about um, uh, sound therapy. Frequency-based therapy is going to be pretty big because it's about resetting your home frequency. And the more we tune into what that feels like, the more we'll recognize what is in frequency with us and what isn't. And uh, they're even being able to figure that out with uh, different cancer treatments and stuff, right? Like they're blowing up cancer cells with frequency mm -hmm. right you dis you create a disharmony in a frequency and, and it loses the bonds of the ether that holds something together wow. right so when we start to learn that that power of sound changing how ether bonds whatever it is we then can reharmonize a lot in the body so there's that light therapy like i said they're change there's a lot coming into that we're moving from what they showed me from red light frequencies there will be something to do with green light frequencies and then eventually rainbow light frequencies, right? So we have like infrared saunas and stuff like that. Like that's very rudimentary into what we're stepping into. So there's that. Um, some of that stuff will be partnered with AI. We will get to a point where, I mean, this isn't going to just happen in 2024, but we are going to get to a point where we're going to balance with AI versus AI taking over. Humanity is not meant to be lost to AI because that would defeat the purpose of humanity's evolution. Mm. We're not meant to evolve into an AI dominant society. However, we will go a bit overboard before we tip back into a balanced, harmonious relationship with it. But it'll get to a point where we'll be more like sentient 
we'll have like sentient craft and stuff that we can connect into, but there is a massive value of the human and the evolved human because of that ability to feel emotion. That's something that's really, really um, prized and respected throughout different galaxies and stuff. So, um, so you mean like merging and integrating with AI, like as far as technology? Yeah, like there'll be more sentient technologies, kind of like what we see in some different ET crafts and stuff that are more sentient, like they're they're touch sensitive to the consciousness of the pilot, right? Mm -hmm. Like crafts are moved around and flown, not just by switches and levers, but through sentient technology. Sentient technology. So that, <clears throat> mean, that doesn't mean like putting a chip in your brain, right? Like that means like connecting with something on a psychic level. Yeah, it's more like they're creating a technology that can respond to, say, perhaps brainwave frequencies, um, but it, it connects in that way is how they show it to me. Um, I don't feel we have that technology here, so I don't know what to use to explain it. Hmm. But it would be kind of like psychic technology, um, but there there's a way to connect in. So like, there's a way that AI can be really beneficial um, but to lose humanity is not what it's, what we are slated for. Okay. Cause yeah. there's like this singularity kind mm -hmm. of theory where we become like a trans human intelligence, like merging with AI, like through either like computer chips or whatever. Right. And then mm -hmm. everyone's operating off like this, this higher intelligence, uh, maybe like the web. So you're like, you know, you would put a chip in or some type of device, and you would be pulling from that system. So you would have like, you know, whatever intelligence you need, like you can communicate without even talking, like it'd be like text messaging. It's like everyone would be essentially operating from that, that uh, hardware software type of like, uh, you, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. manipulation. And I just feel like I kind of want to think and believe that like we biologically evolved to get there. You know what I mean? Like where we evolve as consciousness to where we can do all of those things like telepathy, telekinesis, like naturally, mm -hmm. like you and I could have a conversation like telepathically. Uh, I don't want to think about how we merge with technology to do that, but I feel like, you know, the yogis did that, uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the yogi teachers, the ancient teachers were, able, I feel like we're able, you're just reading their texts, you know, Yogananda and a couple mm -hmm. of others, Sri M., I mean, those guys were doing it naturally. I mean, yeah, they had to spend like 30 years in a cave, but um, I'm hoping, right, like that we evolve a little a little bit faster than that. But I, I don't know, like, what are mm -hmm. your thoughts? Do you, I mean, um, have the guides said any any more about like computer chips and or like, you know, I guess, what is it? What is it called when someone uses, or, you know, merges, like a human merges with technology? What is it? A, a, um, not like a symbi symbiote, but it was like... Um, gosh, what is it? Um, a cyborg or something like that? Oh yeah. Right. Um, let me just go in and ask them. Cause again, like I know that it's not slated for us to lose our humanity to AI in the evolution on our planet, but let me just ask my guides if they have anything more they want to say or anything more they can give us. Um, hold on one sec. So they're saying that until humans can value, like humans in general can value their innate abilities, the way that they value created abilities, there'll always be this, this kind of like game of cat and mouse until the two of them can sit together and be partners in it, right? Realizing that it really does work together without one having to take over the other. Because what's happening right now is People are focusing so much on creating a technology that they don't realize they have innate within them. Our bodies are the most magnificently designed things. The intricacy of the human brain, they keep showing me that, the nervous system, um, and how it all connects into the brain is still something that can't be replicated and with reason. Because we haven't, we haven't gotten to the point of understanding the absolute awe and beauty that it is. And mm. so... There is going to be this cat and mouse until we come to that level of understanding our own innate abilities. And so there are going to be people that, you know, more and more people coming in, opening up to these abilities, eventually making that possible. And when enough people are doing that, we'll show the, the potential for that. 
But now they're showing me that in rewind. They're like, if we rewind to where we are now, we're on track for that though, for that awakening to our abilities, because simply the amount of people that are having these kinds of conversations or open to these conversations or wanting to know more and asking those deeper questions, like how is that possible? That is paving the path for more people coming into that knowledge and awareness, the how to, right? Even spirit teaching us that like, it's the ether bonds between elements. Like you take the four elements, the fifth element is ether. Ether represents the bonds between each element So when you have like sugar on a speaker or salt on a speaker and you play different frequencies, it's the ether that bends with the frequency to move the element somewhere else in a different configuration. When we know that, we can use a scientific approach to do that, but we can also use an energetic, like uh, spiritual approach to do that. It's going to be one and the same. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So would like examples of that be uh, like Jesus, right? Like was he an example of that being able to do all of that so do you think there are people today walking the earth that are very similar to jesus as far as awareness and consciousness oh yeah i would imagine so for sure are you one of those by the way gosh i would never compare myself to jesus (laughs) um uh but what i will say not but maybe but um There are things that I can see and do that not everybody can. All that does is just show what is possible. Just like there are other people that are, um, like I can see deceased people. I can see higher beings. Deceased ones are easier easier to prove because, you know, if somebody lost their dad and their dad's name was Joe and Joe always wore a purple belt and blue shoes and drove a yellow truck, right? Like those are all things that we can prove. But You look at people that are healers, right? Like there are some amazing healers right now that are using energy to completely disintegrate tumors, right? There are amazing people that can literally move things on their table. And it's not those silly TikTok tricks, you know, using wind. But like, I think more and more people are coming into recognizing their innate abilities, coming in with a consciousness to use it. And then also having having a willingness to share it without fear of being ostracized and all of that kind of stuff. And so I think more and more people are going to come into that and it's going to become more normal. And even if we just take like mediumship, mediumship, at least in my world, is becoming more normal. The more I come across more people now that are way less weirded out by what I do. And I think what I do is just a tip, a tiny tip of the iceberg or a drop in the bucket of what were possible, like what is possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, My guides have said levitation is absolutely possible. That's how they explain the ether bonds. They're like, you just need to change the ether bonds through the elements to lift you off the ground. I can't do it yet at all. I've tried. I can't do it yet. That's exactly right. But I know that if I learned how to consciously uh, turn up my frequency connect in with beings, come back down. And that's very normal for me now. While levitation must at some point be normal. Will I hit it in this lifetime? I hope so. Um, All I can do is try. But I think more and more people are coming in with this framework to be able to remember these innate abilities. And that is very much a uh, sacred being nature. I think anyone that stood out in history came in with big knowings of all of that right but they were simply giving examples and buddha was one of them muhammad is another mary Mary magdalene uh there there there's so many sure i think like if you get to a certain point as a human being like highly evolved that i mean i I would assume like you wouldn't have to eat like you wouldn't have to like you know what i mean like the, the energy would be just so different those those types of individuals who are highly evolved would probably not have to do any of those things that we have to do, like even sleep, right? Like, I feel like they can Mm -hmm. just do whatever they want. And I wonder what they're doing, you know? Like, are are they just watching, like just kind of observing the the human race and saying, you idiots, like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, But then again, it's like, at what point would they step out, like to help us or give us like a little nudge, you know? That's a good question. That's a really good question. And I know I have had, conversations with my guides about things like that like 
um, there's been many times where I've said to them, you know, you know, they're giving guidance of something and I'll say, you know, I, I feel like respectfully. So I feel like you don't remember what it's like to be human. And I feel like I could say that, especially after my NDE, because I remember the view that I had of life on that side versus the view that I have here. They're both me. I remember them vividly, but it's very, very different. On the other side is like reminiscing and talking about a snowstorm when you're standing in the tropics. Like, yes, you can think about it, but you're in the tropics right now. So it's not the same as the person standing in the snowstorm waiting. Can they go inside? Right. It's it's really different. And so uh, they will often say, like, tell us what it's like for you there. They love when people talk to them about their experiences. What is it really like? And a lot of people that have recently passed often also bring intel to the other side of what they've experienced. What is it like? Explain it. Um, and an example of that is one time I had a guide of mine who I knew in this lifetime, like was incarnated with them. They crossed over. And one time they came through to bring me a message and I remembered hearing them say to my other guides, no, no, she needs to know this. And they're like, no, we don't think she needs to know this right now. And he's like, yes, she does need to know this because I have been incarnated with her and I know the impact this is having on her. Her not understanding this is not helping. And that's because he was most recently human with me, right? So the well, human what, perspective. What was that? Do you don't, if you don't mind me asking. It was like an insight about what was coming. Like I was getting these, in, these pieces of information in my own journey of something that was coming, but I couldn't, they wouldn't give me the direction of it. So I didn't know where to apply what this heads up was. And that's really frustrating for me. It kind of like, I've learned to just either figure it out. And if I can't let it go, but at the time it would put me in kind of a spin of like, well, like an anxiety kind of spin. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he came through, he's like, listen, it's about this. Uh, keep your head up for, you know, these next three days, this is going to unfold for you, all of that kind of stuff. And, and it was really helpful. And so it's interesting because the human perspective is very different. Our guides do the best they can to help us. There are times where I agree that they shouldn't step in because we need to learn a very valuable lesson. So all to say, when people like Jesus came in, um, I would imagine there was a lot of like restraint and recalibration that he had to do throughout his lifetime to hold himself here with all of that knowledge, still also being human. He had a human body, human brain, higher consciousness. Yes, but he had a human body. And so there was probably a big balancing act in that. Mm. So I would imagine many of those higher ascended masters wouldn't want to embody often. You know what I've been fascinated with recently is like uh, Greek mythology and like mm. the Greek gods, like Zeus and um, Hades and what's the, what are the Athena? Like, have you ever experienced anything like that? Like, have you ever experienced any gods? Like, have you ever seen or heard of, is there like, a, is there a Zeus? Is there an Athena, Hades, like, Archives. Yeah. So what's really interesting is um, I think in folklore and mythology, there's a lot of truths in there. The stories may be a little bit different over time, but I think there's like pieces of truth in there. And I have had a couple experiences. I'm trying to remember which Greek god it was. Um, I can't remember which Greek god it was. It was like the big three, right? There's Zeus, Poseidon, Hades. Hades. Yeah. There's Apollo. Apollo, Hermes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I've had more experiences with embodiments of the Egyptian pantheon. Really? Where they've come forward as guides. Um, or the only one that given I know information. Or, or Thoth. Like that's the only one I really know. Or, yeah. I, don't even, I don't even know if it's an Egyptian an Egyptian like pantheon. Like I don't I don't know. Yeah. I just Yeah, no, Thoth is a part of it. He's also connected to Hermes. Apparently he was Hermes, uh, considers himself thrice great. He was incarnated three times. I think he was also considered to be Merlin too. Mm -hmm. So kind of like one within like different places, but um, there are energetic expressions of those beings. And at least in my experience, I have had very, very real experiences with some of them. Um, as what? As them or as someone associated with them? Uh, as them, like in spirit form. As them. 
like they showing up as them to me. Does that make sense? Like as a guide. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. So oh, I have, so yeah. But you know, guides and teachers that can come in at different times are so unlimited as to who they can be, you know, from um, looking very angelic, like to looking very ET, like to being different people in the past. Uh, one time I had Plato come through in the living room. Yes, it was years ago. Plato was in my living room, living room for a moment. Really? Um, yeah. Was he I've telling seen... you about his cave? Uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't remember what he was telling me at the time. I would have to go back in my journal. Um, do you think that's what he, I mean, does he come in like, just like me, how I would, how I'm here right now? Like, do you see him in flesh and body? It's in like 4d physical, like I was explaining before. So like, it looks somewhat see-through, but it's with my eyes. Like if my eyeballs are seeing it to me, that's 4d physical. But when it's a little bit hologram see-through, like, I know that that's not in a frequency that maybe my husband would see if he's sitting beside me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, to have a conversation with Plato right now would just be, would blow my mind. Like, uh, all right. So what conversation have you had with someone like of, of old, of ancient wisdom was the most impactful in this life for you? Oh, I think it would be Jesus. Um, I was in my kitchen and um, I can't remember where the conversation started, but I was talking to my guides and I remember I was having like a really kind of low day of almost like, what am I doing on this planet? And it wasn't in a way of like, I need to exit this planet, but it was just kind of like questioning, like, why are, why are we here? Like, what are we doing here? And like, I can't make a difference. And I, who am I to have gifts? I think it was probably in the beginning, like near the beginning of embracing what was opening for me. And I remember Jesus appeared and like 40 physical. So very real to me. And he stood face to face with me, like, you know, a couple of feet away. And he took my hand, put it on his heart and put his hand on my heart. So we were kind of like this. And he, I, I remember I didn't want to look in his eyes because I didn't feel worthy, which is funny. I, I don't, I, you know, it's not like I felt like a horrible human, but the, the presence of his energy, the frequency, the light of his energy, I was just like, whoa. And he was like, look into my eyes. He's like, what is within you? Meaning like your heart is also within me. Everything that is within me is also within you as it is within everybody. And it was this lesson of like, do not limit you and don't ever think that you are less than anybody else, including me. And he really wanted to emphasize, like, I am not above anybody. I am beside and I am with equal to all of you. Wow. And it, it was so interesting. And he also imparted this, this thing of like what our mind does. And he was like, there are no sharks swimming in these waters. The sharks reside in your mind. And I remember that always stuck with me. And it was like, yeah, you know what? Like I'm creating these sharks right now. There's no sharks anywhere. And so it was just this really valuable, like the, my heart being the same as his, as is with everybody. And those wise words spoken in such a melodic way, like he does, was just such a beautiful experience. So that was one that really stuck with me. Did he look like any of the pictures that are out there? Um. He had, he had robes. Definitely. He had like kind of Middle Eastern robes. Um, but his face, like there was a, there was a little bit of the longer hair, but to be honest, like I could see his face, but it also had so much light coming from it that like, I can't give you detail, but I could see his eyes, but I could see his face. But at the same time, like it was light. Like there's so much light, but yet his mm -hmm. hand was a hand. Like it, it's hard to explain. It was just so high frequency is what it was. So do you think you saw Jesus because like that was your like upbringing, right? And maybe that's why you didn't see Buddha or, Ooh. or Muhammad or even like Yogananda or one of his masters, like. I, I don't know. Like we were raised loosely Catholic. Um, I don't follow that at all anymore. And we were never strict to follow it. It gave us an understanding of something more growing up. I didn't grow up in a house of 
spiritualists or mediums or anything like that. Uh, but I mean, I always had an aff affinity for Jesus, but I was never like, praise Jesus. Jesus is the answer to everything. I felt Jesus was one of many. Um, I always I wonder if his name was really Jesus or if that's just like a misinterpretation on our part. Like I hear people say yeah. Je Yeshua or Yeshua. Yahweh. Yahweh. Like, I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Do we know? Like, do you know? I Is don't it know. True? Does it even matter? It doesn't really, well, what I'll say from my experience as spirit guides, it doesn't really matter, actually. Uh, some of them will give you a name if they're very, like, proud. Others, most of them, it doesn't really matter. If you want to call them something, then by all means, they usually show up when the frequency signature beckons them, which usually when we give a name Jesus, there's a frequency to that. It beckons that person, but it's not limited to that. So um, he was one of many, to be honest, um, but he was just an absolutely beautiful experience. Like, Do we have to like purify ourselves to have those experiences? Like, Do we have to be an ascetic or a renunciant to, to have those relationships? You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I think... The more aligned you are with who you really are, your light and your dark, the more like real you are about who you are for you. And if who you are for you is you have martinis on the weekend and you eat chips and steak, but you're, you're true to you about it. And you walk that line of authenticity. Um, I think you can have connections, do right? You, like I don't do think have, it has to be. Do you have be... wine? Do you have five o'clock cocktails? You know, I, I can't drink wine anymore. It doesn't make me feel good. The higher I've gone in, the higher I've gone, the further I've gone in my spiritual journey, the less I can tolerate alcohol. I do love the taste of a good martini. Um, but I find I'm at a point now I never, I don't feel good in my body after I do at all. So to me, it's not really worth it anymore. Does it mean I never will again? Absolutely not. I did enjoy a wonderful French martini when I was at Epcot Center. In the fall. And Epcot. Mm -hmm. $12, so $12 yeah. martinis. It was an expensive one. So, I mean, I have my moments for sure. I think our bodies desire to become more refined the farther we go. But what that looks like is completely different to everybody. And I think if you're just being honest with yourself, what feels good in my body? What feels good that I put in my body? Am I being truthful about this? Like... It looks different for everybody, but if you're mm -hmm. walking closer to your authentic path, you have an easier time frequentially connecting into those bigger experiences. Do you think Jesus had kids and do you think he was married? I, I really think he had a deep connection with Mary Magdalene. Like I, I really do. Um, I would imagine he had children too. I mean, I can't prove that. Sure. Could you bring him in? Like, could you like tap into his frequency? He's not someone that I can bring in easily. He's somebody Very. that like has come to me if needed. And that's only been on a couple he's like occasions. A, he's like a cat, right? Like mm -hmm. he, he comes to you. Like yeah. you can go to him, right? Like, or you know what I mean? Like he's, he's yeah. got to come to you. I feel like it's my youngest daughter. Like she's, you know, that's <laughs> actually my middle daughter. She's like a cat. Like she, she'll come that's to you. That's hilarious. When she you know, he did, though, actually come to me when I did this channeling of the first message I shared. He was one of the guides that also came through in that um, in that event. And I could read if you want what he brought forward. Absolutely. For humanity. It's shorter than the last one. Um, it's pretty crazy how we're, we're discussing Jesus right now. And I know, right? It's true. It's true. And the reason why I want to bring through his message is because it, it was so beautiful. So... Um, when I tuned in for what that topic and that event was going to be about, I said to my guides, okay, I'm here. I'm a, I would like to bring through some insights for 2024. Who would like to show up? My usual crew, which is the three guides of the light that I channel most of the time, they were there. Sanat Kumara surprised me. And then Jesus really surprised me by coming forward. Um, so anyways, he said, so one thing that he showed me is that we are moving into a new frequency level. Some people explain this as 5D Earth and 3D Earth, that split in realities. It's a split in a level of consciousness. And Jesus has a deep love and affinity for those that are still really rooted in 3D Earth. And so the reason I say that is because 
he showed me that he was not going where we were going. And I was like, what do you mean by that? He's like, I'm not going there. I am here. I was like, I don't understand. And so then he explained this. So he said, my presence on earth, the one that you have all heard about was but one of many incarnations. I too, as you had to journey through many incarnations to come in at that time that I did to embody a high Christed consciousness within a dense earth frequency. Just as many of you struggle now to hold the high frequency, so too did I. I would have to spend many moments recalibrating to my higher known frequency and detach from the sadness, grief, and struggle of the disconnected human frequency. Many people of my day forgot their sacred connection to source. That was part of my reason for my incarnation. I have a deep love for that point of evolution, the point in which a person releases what they once knew and opens to what is possible. When a person lets down their armor of their heart and feels divine Christ love, that is what makes me feel my purpose, even from my perspective now. I have a deep love for people, especially those who walk in the dark. They think they are alone, yet I am always there walking with them. When people say Jesus saves, they are not wrong in one sense, yet they are only seeing one fraction of the truth. It is not I that saves you, I walk with you. The truth is that you save you. When you open your heart, you begin your healing. When you open the door to Christ consciousness to move through you with awareness, you, you put down your armor and open to love. And since this is my focus, I am there with you. However, there are many other spirit guides and ascended masters and higher beings with you too. You are always loved and supported. It is time now for those of you in the new frequency to embody the Christed consciousness within you. This same consciousness runs through you that did me, the Christ within you. You are equal to me in your heart. Know that you are light and you are loved, love embodied at this time. Drop the mic. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you have Christ consciousness now? Um, I think I think many of us are definitely tapping into that Christ consciousness now. That's been something that's been on the planet for a while that more people are opening up to. And so um I think it is a collective ascension into it. The way that they show it to me is like this blue flame like a blue flame of awareness that kind of like lights up in the heart. And when your heart starts to burn a blue flame fire, it's that kind of Christed consciousness within. Have you ever tapped? Have you though, personally ever tapped into that? I have. Yeah. And, yeah. but again, like it's, it's, um, it's a universal consciousness, right? Like it's not just a Jesus consciousness. It's a universal consciousness so, so is that Buddha source, had it. Is that like Muhammad source consciousness like the, yeah like it's a source yeah. connected consciousness of higher thinking to put it very plainly hmm. a yeah. true realization of self like uh, as everything yeah like an yeah and like an unlimited view and um shifting the perception of being separate from things right like Christ consciousness is knowing the connection in all things. Well, have you ever been able to shift your awareness from your body to someone else's? Uh, yeah, like being empathic. Well, like, you know how you're looking at me now through that screen, like through that body? Like, have you ever been able to shift your awareness to someone else's in this reality? Like, and see it through their eyes? Oh, um, yes and no. So... We all do that innately when we are very empathic. So being able to experience somebody else's pain, which is usually the strongest, most easiest one to feel, somebody else's headache, somebody else's nausea, somebody else's broken leg, right? Um, we're having that experience of experiencing them from their perspective. To see through somebody else's eyes uh, is not something I've been able to do. I've been able to project my consciousness to see somebody though, uh, which is using that like Christ consciousness level. If I, if we could explain that almost like the internet back in the day, we couldn't understand what the internet was, but if you connect into the internet, you can go see, do whatever you need. That would be same, same sort of thing. If that mm. makes sense. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And because I have dreams where I'm just the observer. Like I'll, it doesn't, like I'm watching a scene. Like I, I don't, I'm not a person. I'm just kind of like watching a conversation unfold. And I'm just kind of mm -hmm. like, I don't, like a fly on the wall almost. Mm, amazing. Yeah. I don't know what that's, about. I've had one lucid dream. I've had one lucid, lucid dream recently where I realized, realized I was dreaming and like ran up to my aunt and was like, this is a dream, right? Like this is a dream. I was like, I'm going to go fly now. And then I try to go fly and I can only get to like halfway up. Like there's trees. I can only get like maybe to the tops of the trees, but I couldn't go anymore. And then like, I, I woke up and I was like, holy crap. I just realized I was, I was dreaming. Like Mm -hmm. Amazing. I'm, 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 I'm sure you had some pretty amazing lucid dreams. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I have. And, uh, um, I had one actually just before we got on the call today. It's funny. So about, I don't know, two hours before we started our chat, I was like, I'm going to have, I'm just going to lay down for a little nap. I kind of felt this draw to just lay down. And my daughter was watching a movie, snow day today, right? And I closed my eyes and I started to feel this pressure on my face and not just, um, like it wasn't a me pressure. It was an external pressure. And I was like, oh, who's here? And I could see, I could see this Pleiadian guide show up. And the pressure increased on my face. And what usually happens at that point is I will go on an astral travel. And usually I get pulled out of my face, which the first time that happened to me, I it freaked me right out. But I tend to leave my body through my face. I know some people will leave in different ways, lift up, but I tend to just kind of come out of my face, which is really weird to explain. But um, they took me on this lucid dream experience because my body fell asleep but a lucid dream experience into this pyramid uh in an astral space near the pleiades star system to shift some frequencies in my body really do you do that for healing or is that just you know are there are they just adventures sometimes are they healing like what is that like out sometimes of body experiences they're sometimes they're adventures this one here was um healing i injured my leg again the other day so Um, that's not conducive to my busyness and dance schedules. Uh, so I'd ask for some healing on that. Um, and so that, that was part of it, but it was very, very lucid. I knew where I was going. And then I kind of, after I landed there, I kind of let go of it, drifted into nothingness and then came back to that. They wanted to make sure I remembered what was happening and then came back to waking state. Ah, Yeah. like I literally can talk to you all night. Like, seriously, I want all of your knowledge. Just give it to me. Um, Jeanette, like, how can people connect with you? How can they find out more? How can they, how can they connect and, and maybe have a conversation with you? So, you know, the best way is if people are enjoying this kind of stuff is they can follow me on YouTube. It's just uh, Jeanette Byro Medium on YouTube. I do daily readings on there. Like a couple of days are card readings just because cards are a neat modality to do that. Wednesdays is a mediumship or channeling reading. Mondays, I drop a podcast every time on something interesting. So that's a really easy way to get messages that I bring through for the collective. Uh, and that's free. Of course, I just ask people to subscribe if they like it, because that's great. Um, otherwise, they can check out avalonspirit.com. And on my website there, there are different ways people can join me for cosmic consciousness, which is like some of what I read of those uh, predictions from the masters. There's um, different teachings that I offer uh, classes. I'm starting a meditation Monday once a month where we can tune in together and meditate. So various options from things that are totally free to things that are bigger time investment and check out the podcast too. So Check out the pack, podcast, subscribe, leave a comment, and rate that bad boy. Jeanette, thank you for taking the time and just exploring uh, all of my random qu questioning. It was just like so fascinating. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Thank you.